How's it going folks? This is the Tech Gooch with another video review for you. This time we are taking this, or well, I guess more importantly, this, and putting it on a Dell Mini 10V netbook. If you've watched my other videos, I have put Windows XP and two iterations of Linux so far. So I guess three reviews uh, for you guys on uh, different OS systems to run on my Dell Mini 10V. Uh, it is, well, I'll put the specs of the actual netbook in the description below. But I uh, thought I'd show you how I did it. I've actually, this is going to be the second time I've done it. Uh, but I kind of, I'm going to go through step by step. Basically, how did I actually do it? So how do you actually get it on your netbook? Uh, pretty simple, but I thought uh, I'd give you a little video tutorial how to do that. But then also my I'm running it on the, on the netbook, how, how fast everything runs, and my little review of it. Of course, this is coming from a Windows user, I'm not a Linux user per se, and I'm definitely a Windows user, however, I've used a little bit of everything, so I'm getting used to it. I, uh, you, One thing I, I should warn is that um, you are going to need, for the way that I'm setting it up, you are going to need another Mac running. And in my case, I'm actually running a, uh, a Hackintosh on a custom ring that I built. And uh, that's uh, my main computer, and I, yeah, I have to boot into, I actually boot from, uh, from a, uh, another little program called iBoot. And from that, I just basically put this disk in my computer, it puts the main files underlining to make Mac, think that it's running on a Intel based Mac and then you go from there. It's pretty cool. So it basically it's just a bootloader. Uh, pretty simple but it's kind of annoying to put a CD in every time. But however, if I don't put the CD in, it automatically goes to Windows. So it works good. So with that said, uh, I'll start from here and we'll show you how everything's done and I guess my thoughts and opinions. So here we go. Okay, here we are folks. This is my Hackintosh desktop on my well, custom rig, but I uh, uh, thought I'd show you how to do how we're going to do this here. I have my Mac uh, box set with Snow Leopard, iLife, and iWork, and uh, mainly I'm just going to need the Snow Leopard CD. And I also have my little USB key. I'll do this USB key right now. Is actually the program I'm going to need to use to create the bootable key, uh, and I'll install that before I format the key. So. And uh, I'm gonna need Snow Leopard out of here. So, yeah, uh, well, I'm getting Snow Leopard out. Open up the netbook installer. There's the, the guy. I'm gonna transfer that right onto the desktop here. Double click on him to open him up. While he's doing that, I'm gonna get the Snow Leopard disc. And again, you can uh, buy Snow Leopard at a lot of different retailers and stuff around the area. Um, but, uh, Obviously, get buy, buy the retail version. Come on, people. You don't need to be downloading it. So, Okay, so I haven't really done anything. I just wanted to get the website up real quick. Uh, this is on Gizmodo. And uh, this is the best little tool to kind of give you an idea of, of the step-by-step -step procedure to how to do this to get your to get Snow Leopard on your Dell Mini 10V. Uh, I have the bootloader unzipped and everything over here. I haven't done anything, obviously, because I don't have the zip drive ready. Uh, but then I just put the CD in, and here we go. So right now, you'll have to open up the disk utility. Uh, you can go through the menu down here, the applications. I just like to go to the search bar. Just type in uh, disk. The disk utility will be the first one that comes up. What you'll need to do is, there's my 8 gigabyte sand disk guy right here. Uh, you'll have to partition it. Uh, do a single partition. You also want to hit the options to make sure that master boot record is, is on it. Name it whatever you want. I'll just name it. Ah, sorry. Uh, snow... Snowy Dell, how about that? And I'll hit apply and uh, it'll partition it just as it needs to partition it. Doesn't take very long, just a few couple seconds, 10 minute, whatever. And then following this, basically what we'll need to do is we'll need to do a restore. So here we go, we're on it. We're have that select, hit restore. Uh, the source image file uh, is the Mac OS X install CD. Destination, we're going to want it to go to the new snowy Dell guy yeah, that I put it on. And uh, erase destination, you're going to have that to highlight it so it makes sure it erases it or whatever. 
hit restore. This part will take a while uh, because obviously after you have to put in your password. Blah blah blah. There we go. And now it's installing. It's basically taking the image from the disk and putting it on the USB key. And it's as simple as that. This is going to take some time, so we're just going to let it go. Uh, make sure that it gets to this point where it's actually copying blocks. I've had it miscalculate before. If you did do something right here, it would this time it might actually screw up. So make sure that this gets to this point, and there you go. After this, then uh, we'll uh, start installing it on the Dell. So I just got to finish doing everything. I reloaded the U or the USB keys now on the computer. This is actually from the USB key saying Mac OS X install DVD. So everything's been transferred over to the USB key. I have my netbook installer, which I'm going to use right now. Open that up, and it brings up the little window here. All I do for this guy is select a partition to which to install this netbook installer. I want the Mac OS X install DVD. Do not put it on your Snow Leopard install base. That's what I actually have Snow Leopard running on my computer here. I hit that, and then just hit prepare drive. Uh, you'll have to enter in your password. And uh, it mounts, does its little thing here. Install complete. And from there, I can actually just close out of it. Uh, close out of whatever I have here. I can just eject this guy now. And now, I'm actually set to put it on my netbook. Okay, so now I have the USB key in on my netbook. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. Automatically went right to the actual thing. Uh, I'm going to actually choose the install DVD. Okay, it's been about two minutes now. And uh, now so everything's loaded up. Uh, I can just proceed. The bad thing about this is that obviously Mac OS X is not made for small netbooks like this. So you can see that there's a cutoff at the bottom of the screen here. Either way, it still works. Um, and we can just continue through the operation as normal. Right away, I like to go ahead and go into uh, Disk Utility and uh, basically create the, the netbook to run solely on Mac. Obviously, with this, you can do a dual boot and set everything up for that purpose. But for now, for uh, my purposes, I'm creating a standalone uh, Mac netbook. So, I'm going to the partition database. I'm going to create just a single partition because of it. What I'm going to create, call it Snow Leopard. Use the full amount. Master boot record. Actually, I'm going to do the GUID table. And partition complete. Now I can go ahead and close out of Disk Utility. I like to go through the customized options. And you can select or deselect things that you want or don't want to, that, uh, to Mac to automatically install. I'm just going to go ahead and install everything that they, I got here, which includes QuickTime. Um, whether or not I'll, I need it or not is another story, and I'm just going to click that guy too. Selected and hit install, and that's that. And the next you'll see me is setup. Okay, so here we are back. Uh, everything's installed now, so now it's just all about setting it up. I uh, probably won't go ahead and bore you, but basically it's very simple settings. Uh, you, you know, just telling where you are, what your keyboard layout is, if you want to transfer things from another Mac, and then uh, you have to log into your Apple account if you have one, um, and uh, I guess wireless network. But uh, we'll, uh, I'll go through this, and then I'll get back to the desktop. Okay, so I have all the other stuff set up, and now it's... Obviously the webcam works, so I just took a photo with my webcam with this. Uh, if you want to do it again, obviously here's the button right here, but uh, you can see that the webcam works. I hit continue, and then uh, select your time zone, um, kind of up in this area, I believe. See what I'm right? Yep, Chicago, there we go. And uh, you set your date and time. Looks right to me. And of course it tells you to register. And, uh, of course, I own this version of OS X, and uh, I have registered it before, so everything works just fine, to tell you the truth. But, other than that, everything comes up like you would expect it to with uh, Mac OS X Snow Leopard. Everything works just based off the, uh, off the thing. To tell you the truth, I, I've, obviously I said this is the, my second time installing it, um, but it's... If you like Mac's system, 
And to tell you the truth, uh, at one point, like, if you read my review on GoochPicker.com, I'll say a lot of uh, what my experiences is with in the past and how, you know, user bias I am towards Windows. However, now that I, I have a little more, more time under my belt and I'm opening my mind a little more, I do like the Mac environment. You know, I don't like it as much as Windows, but that's probably more because I'm used to Windows. And But I'm trying to keep as open mind as possible to every operating system and everything out there. Uh, I don't know if this is the best fit for a netbook like this, specifically of the caliber of the Mini 10V, but uh, it it works. And to tell you the truth, the speed that it works is similar to Windows 7 Starter, to be honest. Uh, you know, the sound works, as you can see there. Uh, video, the, the Internet Explorer works, the Internet works, the webcam works. This fits the Mini 10V very, very, very well. Everything works on it like it should, which is great. The, that netbook loader for the Mini 10V works very, very well. And that's if you want to have a cheap MacBook, basically, I mean a mini small MacBook, the Mini 10V will fit you because you can get these cheap. This computer cost us, with the extended battery and everything, a little over three hundred dollars, and that came with Windows Seven Starter. But you can put a Snow Leopard on it for, I mean, have a basically a, a very low power MacBook for very very cheap, and that's the greatest thing about it. And uh, to be honest, in the end, I'll probably do a dual boot for uh, Snow Leopard and whatever else I choose. So I wanted to show you that it does work. Um, if I go to the Apple Store right here, there we go. Uh, the Apple Start page is coming up. It renders pages just like it does. It obviously is not the fastest for rendering even. It is a netbook. It's it's an animation netbook, and that's the limitations of the, of the OS. So, um, I'm, that. I'm still getting used to the different operating systems and how they handle it. You saw that, how it lagged down to the bar here. And that's because, obviously... With a net, with a, a an atom based netbook without the graphics power, it just doesn't have the graphics power. So, um, and you could probably, you, I mean, you could obviously turn a lot of that features off in your preferences. But with uh, with that said, to be honest, like I said, it works. I'm not going to go through. This is Mac OS X, or you know, it's it's Snow Leopard, and it's going to look the same no matter what it's on. It's obviously going to run better on different computers, but. I'm not going to give you a review over the actual operating system, but how it runs on my Mini 10B netbook, and I have to give it a thumbs up because it works flawlessly. Uh, there is no th nothing that doesn't work. But this, for speed reason, it runs about the same speed as Windows 7 Starter. Uh, this, the Linux distros and Windows XP are the two that ran the fastest, and the this one and Windows 7 Starter are the slowest. Now I still have to do a review on Windows 7 Starter, and I'll I'll, I'll do that soon enough. But uh, here you are. You can see for yourself. Win or uh, Mac OS X Snow Leopard does run on a Dell Mini 10V. So that's how it goes, and that's that's basically it. So so that there's my review. Uh, it's a review more of the fact that it works um, and it works quite well it doesn't it's not as fast as uh some of the other operating systems i've cho I've, I've worked with uh nor did i think it would be so it's a little it's more powerful it's just like windows you know is for for it as well windows xp and windows uh, 7 max or snow leopard is more on the on the level of windows 7 to be honest and uh it's a little more power hungry like that one is anyway so if you're going to think that it's going to run like a Linux distribution, it's not. It's not as peppy. But it works quite well. And uh, the key is is that you can have yourself a lightweight, low-powered MacBook for a minimal cost. So, please, subscribe above, comment below, and take it easy. This is the Tech Gooch saying thanks for watching. Appreciate it.